Hello, everybody. Again, I'm very happy that there is a debugging microconference for the first time, because I believe um, if testing is believed to be underrated, debugging is probably even more so. It's not cool to debug. You know, like it's cool to write new code, but not to debug. But I'm really glad it's getting recognized now. And my uh, topic is something that I have been doing for about a decade, I think. Uh, but I never was paid for it, so it was always a hobby project. That's why it's moving so slowly. Um, and I'll try to present what it's all about. Good. Um, so, how do I move that on? Okay. A bit of the background. Um, why did I even start this live KDOM file thing? Um, well, it is a library that allows access to crash dumps, like system crash dumps. And I feel like this, that, that wheel was reinvented too many times. So for the first time it was um, done in L crash. Can anyone still remember L crash? That was a terrible tool. Um, it was written by SGI uh, as part of the LKCD, which was just Linux kernel crash dump project. Um, but it was one of the first of its kind. So, okay, I'm not just, I, I'm, I'm not really ranting, but okay. So they were the first people who had to somehow interpret the data. Um, then it was in, implemented in crash again. Then it was implemented again in makedump file um, because makedump file can now uh, read an existing kdump and refilter it and save it again as a, as a kdump file. So they also needed some routines to uh, interpret the data. Um, and obviously they also have to support the L format. I'll get to that. And then at some point um, I've, wanted to identify unknown core files that uh, came to SUSE a customer care. So like they, they, they got a kernel crash dump, but didn't know exactly what kernel version it was taken on. So I was like um, writing my own tool that was kdump ID. And um, when I saw that this wheel has been reinvented, I was like, okay, um, we probably should write a library. So, yeah, let's make the wheel. Uh, it should be reliable, universal, one wheel to rule them all. Um, okay, maybe not the last one. Um, but now I wanted to make it good. And now when I was writing this slide, I realized that um, the goals are probably a bit ambitious. So um, first is so I, I'll spend a bit on, on these design goals because it can explain why I wrote the library the way I did. Um, so the first thing was I would try to mimic what actual hardware does. So if there is something in the hardware specification, I will preferably use it at least as a fallback. The reason for that is I don't want to rewrite it again and again and again. Um, if the internal interpret, uh, representation of the data structures changes in, in the kernel. And it has proven pretty good. Like um, these, these routines have not been touched except when uh, new paging formats were added to the specification itself. Um, so for example, for the IBM mainframe, it has not changed never ever. <laughs> Their specification is future proof they can do six level paging if needed. Okay, theoretically, I don't think they have the hardware for that, but okay. Anyway, uh, second thing was I wanted this to be cross-platform because occasionally we, we received um, dump files from an architecture that was not common. Well, okay, obviously SUSE had all the, all the architectures uh, that they ship, but... Um, Yes, the, 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 you, if you could do something on your desktop, that was easy. If you had to reserve something, 
Um, sometimes you found out that all the machines were taken um, or they were not taken because they were slightly broken. So um, to install a new operating system on it, you spend like one day finding out how to boot it. Um, so I no, I, I said I didn't want that. I want just um, you get a crash dump from any architecture. You open it on your machine. Um, I wanted to, uh, I didn't want to make it Linux specific. Um, and in fact, uh, there is already support for one more operating system. Um, you can use a libk dump file to, to read Zen hypervisor dumps and see the Zen data, not the Linux data, which is in, in DOM zero. Um, you can really also get the, the hypervisor data. And I wanted to, yeah, I wanted to preserve that. A crash can also do this, um, but I was like um, trying to do something more generic. So theoretically, if someone wants to adapt it for, say, OpenBSD, well, there is a way. Um, I'm not doing it because I'm not involved in, in that project, but theoretically, it could be done. Like it's there's an attribute which is which is a string, so you can just. If you write something that's not supported, you just get a nice error that the operating system is not supported. Uh, but yeah, theoretically, it's 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 ready for that. Um, right. Um, next, it should be small enough for the crash kernel. What I mean is, um, I wanted and I probably still want to replace the implementation in make dump file. Now, make dump file runs in the crash kernel reserved area, which means you don't have a lot of memory. So it should be, yeah, like the, the, the library should not be resource hungry. Um, next, um, that is related. It, it should be fast enough to run on crashed system. The, thi the thing is, um, when, you, when your system crashes and it takes a dump file, um, that is downtime, essentially the main system is not operational. And uh, you want to come back online as soon as possible. So I was really looking like um, to make all the fast, all the hot paths uh, fast. And um, yeah, theoretically, if you replace that and make dump file, it should be even faster. Depends a bit on what exactly you're dumping. So I did measure something. OK, I, I'll get to that. But it should be fast. Um, next, it, it must expose detailed information. The thing is, if I wanted to replace the implementation in make dump file, then I have to provide all the details that make dump file needs to produce a filtered dump, which was the reason I implemented these attributes, because otherwise um, it's not really extensible. I would probably have to create a data structure that gets updated whenever the format gets a new version. And the, the, the disk dump already has something like 10 revisions. So yeah, it gets extended from time to time. And last but not least, it should be reasonably easy to use. With that, I mean, the API should not be overcomplicated. I think I did not quite um, meet the goal, but given all the other constraints. Well, OK. Um, I definitely accept pull requests that provide an easier API. And even, and even like feedback, if you have ideas how the API should be changed to make it easier for the users, like just let me know or open a GitHub issue. Good. So next, um, the challenges. OK. Um, why it can't be replaced today. Um, well, apart from the design goals, which are a bit ambitious, um, we have this architecture zoo. Um, and although it may look like, um, yeah, libk on file supporting five architectures already is pretty good. Um, if you compare that with the other existing tools, it's actually less than a half. Um, even though we probably can re uh, remove one line from this table now. <laughs> it's still less than one half. Um, 
Uh, the 31 bit. Yeah, I probably can also forget about the 31 bit S390. Yes. Now, the thing is, adding architectures is relatively easy. Uh, when I added the 32 bit ARM, I wrote a how to, like I was recording the steps that I was doing, and uh, it's available. Um, it boils down to implementing the, the page table translation um, or whatever the hardware does. That's why I'm, I don't consider the IBM Power support uh, ready because, um, okay, you can have Radix page tables with recent Power CPUs, uh, but there is also this H tab, like a hash tab, hash table, and that's not implemented. So, I mean, Okay, whatever. Um, so it does not have to be page table translation, but usually it is. Um, then you want to write some code that will support the Linux kernel, uh, mainly that is interpreting the data from a VM core info and setting up the page tables automatically based on that data. And then you probably want to expose the CPU registers if they are saved in the dump format. So that is relatively easy, um, except um, I wanted to keep the uh, the library reliable. So um, you always start by by writing a test case, and this can be annoying. Um, I have just started uh, writing support for Risk Five Sixty Four. Um, writing the test cases took me the whole flight from Europe to the US, and writing the page table translation. I did that in one of the breaks yesterday. So <laughs> you get the idea. But that's because writing the test case also means finding out how exactly uh, these page tables are implemented, reading the specs and so on. So I mean, if you're familiar with the architecture and not a newcomer like I was, uh, then it's probably easier. Good. So that's the architectures. But we also have the format zoo. That's not really relevant for makedom file because makedom file will always get its input data in as an elf dump, uh, like proc VM core. That's how the, the crashed kernel presents itself to the um, crash dump taking kernel, the panic kernel. Um, but if and now, now that is a big if. if. If we could also replace that in the crash to crash utility, uh, then we probably would have to support all these formats because um, otherwise they would say it's a regression, you know, missing feature. Um, if you look at the format, uh, there's three. Uh, I divided that in three groups, like um, the common ones, and that again on, on bare metal. The ELF is the like canonical format. Uh, K dump or the modified disk dump, um, that's what is produced by make dump file. And that's pretty much all that we get. Um, for the virtual uh, environments, uh, we have a bit more variety. There's this QMU. Like uh, I'm, I'm talking about, QMU can also save uh, a K dump format, but. Uh, the crash utility supports reading a QMU VM state file, uh, which was not invented for taking a dump, but um, it can it, it, it's used to restore a VM state. So obviously, you can also make a dump file from that. Um, Lightbird is just a container for that. Um, Zen Elf is supported. Um, XC Core, XC Save. These are just uh, some Zen formats that I don't know much about. Um, then there are these vendor-specific formats, like these, um, these are implemented by firmware. Uh, so theoretically, you get them. Uh, SA dump is like standalone dump. It's uh, implemented on Fujitsu primer servers. There is no documentation for it. Oh, actually, there is. I wrote it. I reverse engineered the format based on a few samples and wrote it down. Um, Otherwise, Fujitsu was not very open about sharing the details. Um, there's this RAM dump, that's a Qualcomm thing, um, and a bunch of uh, mainframe formats. 
yeah, S390 dump is even supported, that VM is not. And then there are some historic formats which probably don't have to be re-implemented, but as it happens, LKCD was implemented initially, so that is, um, and disk dump is just um, um, an older revision of the key dump file hook, so that is also implemented. So we have the, his the history is all right to keep, like nothing more to do. Uh, the problem with adding formats is there is no how to. So if, if, if you're interested in adding a format, then yeah, fingers crossed. Um, it requires some knowledge, um, like, like maybe you would have to enhance the infrastructure in libkdump file itself. So I like, like and, and some of them are poorly documented. Like kdump is defined by the makedump file sources. It's, there is no formal specification of it. Um, say down by I have just mentioned. Um, good, yes, yeah, so I'm getting to the current conversion proof of concept. I did try to convert make it on file uh, a few years ago. That was version 168, uh, which is now some 100 comments behind the, the current main uh, branch. Um, that was good. Like um, the easy part was converting file reads. Um, it was really like, converting a few call sites in, in make dump file and that's it. Uh, then there was address translation, which was mostly fine uh, with a few exceptions like this standalone dump and, and then they needed more adjustments. And then there was, yeah, the VM core info, which uh, make dump file tries to interpret on, on its own. That was messy, but um, it could be done. Like, okay, um, I did it, I, um, it, it, it did work. Um, with the exception of Zen dumps, it was even just as fast as before the conversion. And yeah, it it is compliant with the current development trends in Linux. Like if you see that is net removal of some 3,600 lines. So maybe it would be acceptable now <laughs> to use the opportunity. But yeah, a few things are still missing. So I'm, First of all, I would have to rebase it on a current version. So I plan to do it. Good. Um, and since we have still some time, I will present some other wild ideas. Um, the, the first is not really wild because it's working now. It's a GDB server based on libkdom file. So what it does is it, it starts a GDB server, uh, which presents the data from the DOM file. So you can connect to it and get a standard GDB session written in Python. Originally, uh, the author, it's written by Alexander Kamensky. I don't know if it's here. Uh, no, um, I kind of thought he, he, he sent a pull request for the main repository. And I felt um, like, I feel it, it does not belong to there. Um, I, I didn't know what to do about it because the, the idea was so good, but yeah, so in the end, I just took his uh, comment and converted it to a new um, new uh, project, which is under my namespace. But I also feel guilty about it because now it seems like it's my project, but it's in fact his. <laughs> but you can try it out. It, it works. Um, I have fixed a few things, so it's now also reasonably fast and I would be interested in some feedback. It, what it can do, it can do full backtraces, like from kernel to user space. That's a cool, cool thing, which only works because most architectures have, um, can, can distinguish between kernel and user space addresses by the highest bit. Uh, there are some architectures which don't have that, and then I think it can't really be fixed. Yeah, you would have to keep some kind of tag with each address if that one is kernel space or user space. Good, so that's the GDB server. And okay, another wild uh, idea which uh, appeared um, many years ago and was like, that was a question from an IBM engineer. He, he asked, okay, this library looks good. Uh, is there any write support, which was, Surprising to me because I was not thinking about uh, write support. 
but maybe it could be implemented. I mean, I, I, when I redesigned some of the internals, I had that in mind. Uh, so I provide a way to make a copy on write clone. The, the, the idea is you open a file, you clone it, then you change the file format attribute, and then you can write it in a different format. But yeah, like that's not implemented. <laughs> I would be really interested if anyone has good ideas for the API. But if we did that, make down file could be reduced to just like open it, um, filter out the pages, adjusting the, the, the bitmap, and then just flush it uh, through libkdom file, which just sounds somehow interesting. It's, it, it, if it reminds you of BFD and object copy, uh, yes, it goes in that direction. Obviously, there are some unresolved things like uh, split dump files because make dump file can produce multiple dump files. Um, I don't know if that feature is widely used, but it is there and we would have to think about it in the API. Yes. Can you repeat what is black support you convert? Can you repeat what black support is you convert in the form and another? Yeah, that, that, yeah, that's it. That's it. Like, uh, let let the library write out a new dump file based on some uh, data that it has, which could mean, yeah, use any file format that is supported for writing and possibly also leave out some pages, take care of the compression thing and like a, a lot of other things, but. Because it turned out the, the IBM engineer uh, maintained a tool that can convert a, a mainframe VM dump to make dump file, I believe. So if we had this, uh, he could just drop that project and save some work. Okay. I'm not actively working on this feature, just to make it clear. It's just on my agenda, theoretically, one way that could be extended. So that's about it. Um, we have some five minutes for discussion. All right, Omar, take the cube. Uh huh. Okay, while we are waiting for them. Okay, now. Thank you. All right, any any questions here? Ooh. Throwing you off. <laughs> All righty, I'm here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so Dragon is a happy user of libkdump file. A uh, couple questions I had that I haven't gotten a chance to ask you before uh, is, you have all the address translation routines implemented for different architectures. Dragon also has them because we need them for some of our helpers. How how like a separate are they from the rest of libkdump file? So we could maybe use it. Okay, so that idea actually originated from a discussion with Jeff Mahoney, and I realized yes, indeed, there is. Um, distinction between uh, the address translation and the interpreting the format itself, like the, the file format. And uh, they are separate. You could, you, you can use address translation without uh, like KDOM file. And it was designed so that you could do, uh, you could implement a virtual to physical command uh, without understanding the underlying uh, data structures, like even how many, levels of paging the raw, just make that started, make one step, print out the, the raw data, make another step until you get like um, 
indication that there are no more steps needed to have the virtual address. So um, it, 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 it could be converted. I, I'm, I kind of regret that uh, Dragon is not using that and re-implementing it for every new architecture and every new paging form that is added to an architecture because my idea was we could save that, we could just do it once. Um, shall I just convert it and send a pull request? <laughs> There's a few architectures that I need to I need to take a look at your API to figure out if it would work for the other things we use it for. Like we also use it for user space address translation. Um, so I'll have to think about it, but that's why I wanted to ask to see if it was possible. Yeah, I mean, um, internally the address translation is implemented as a like virtual memory map uh, that that is uh, split into regions, and each region can have a different method that is used for the translation, which means uh, you, can, uh, you can divide the address space into the, like lower half and upper half and uh, assign the kernel translation method to the upper half and a user translation method to the lower half, and then it will automatically work. Okay, nice. I think another reason I didn't use it initially was because libk.file wasn't packaged for every distro, but as part of getting Dragon into every distro, uh, Michelle and Davide uh, packaged up libk.file as well, so that's no longer really a concern. So, Yeah, yeah that's the reason. I mean, um, I, I, I wasn't sure if you want to do this because it adds a hard dependency on libk.file. Yeah. So, still need to think about it, but thanks. Okay. Any other questions? We have a minute or so. I'll add my own here. Uh, you mentioned in the architecture support uh, that you, you talked about page tables and then the Linux support as a bullet point, but it's kind of interesting because it can be a little complicated to find the page tables just given a VM core info and, and the, the core dump itself. Do you, did you, do you have any trouble with those or you know do you have any thoughts on whether there, it would be nice if there's a less architecture specific way to get get at page tables for uh, for an architecture it's like you have to do some weird math on a lot of different symbols that are in there right that is almost correct so the thing is um, for example for the make dump file case there is no such need because the elf uh, like the prop vm core uh, contains both virtual and physical addresses uh, so if I get the virtual address of the root page table, I just can read it with no translation. I mean, that's, a, that's also a difference. Um, like internally, uh, libkdump file knows which address uh, spaces are directly supported by the file format, and it will use the one that is available. On the other hand, you may have to translate physical into virtual, which means you have to set up the direct mapping and that will not work with the VM core info. Mm -hmm. um, so um, yes, if we could unify how this uh, gets, uh, yeah, I mean, but it, 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 would, it would only help to the future because right now we have to support what is in the, in the wild. And there is, yeah, there is a lot. Yeah, and for example, uh, like when I was writing the support for the RISC 564, I realized the 6.4 kernel can't be supported at all because it does not export all the necessary information. Like, yeah, I get it. All right, we're gonna have to, to cut now so we can yes. get uh, Omar a chance. So thank you again, Peter.